it um, goes over the stabilizers, support muscles, neutralizers, and synergists. Okay, so let's define each of them. Okay, so we have uh, we have a stabilizer. We have a neutralizer. We have support muscles. Support muscles, yes. And the antagonist and agonist, or are you probably not going to cover that so much? Um, we can go over those two. That should be up here. And then synergist? Yes. Neutralizers, stabilizers, support muscles, synergist. I remember we talked about this, it's just. I haven't really remembered it, sadly. Mm -hmm. It's okay, we'll go over it. Okay. So, are there any of these that you can remember? Um, I want to say the neutralizer has a common mm -hmm. action. Good. But it also has an opposite action. Good. To neutralize stuff. Yep. Stabilizer also originates from the same bone. I mean, it has insertion on the origin or the bone moving. Mm -hmm. Or joint, I guess. Yep. I don't remember much else about that. Good. Okay. Um, uh -huh. Support muscles help to basically keep you from falling while doing an exercising so you know prevent you from having gravity or the action cause you to collapse. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, so uh, support muscles are always f away from the joint. They don't actually act upon the joint mm -hmm. um, and they're usually postural things. Like so your abdominals, probably mm -hmm. obliques, external and internal, all that stuff. Yep. Okay. So they basically hold you upright. So just like you said. Okay, um, and like you said, a stabilizer, I'm just gonna probably rephrase it a little bit. Um, so it's a muscle mm -hmm. that inserts on the bone. Moving moving or it's actually specifically the bone um the agonist because the agonist of the muscle cause and reform the movement the antagonist is the one resisting the movement right mm -hmm. well yeah so it's the bone that the agonist originates so and the agonist is generally always the muscle that is contracting during a movement so the agonist is what's performing the action. Okay. Okay, the antagonist is going to be a muscle that would oppose that motion. So, um, and generally relaxes whenever you perform an action. So for example, when you do a bicep curl, your bicep is contracting, your triceps has to relax because this is the agonist, this is the antagonist. Otherwise you couldn't move, you'd just be stuck. Mm -hmm. However, if you're doing um, if you're working your tricep, um, like with the tricep pulls, pullovers or whatever, um, you have your triceps would be the agonist in that case because the triceps have to contract in order to overcome that weight. Correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do the two-step process with this first. Okay. So, you have your arms here, and you're performing this motion. Okay. So, what movement is that at the elbow? That's going to be extension. Good. Basically. Extension. Okay. What is resistance tending to cause? Elbow flexion. Good. What muscle group is involved? Elbow extensors. Good. What is an elbow extensor? An elbow extensor would be your um, triceps. Good, okay. Triceps right here. Good, so that will be the prime mover in this case, okay. Um, 
So what's another? Can you think of another elbow extensor? There's one more. Um, I think in delta, but I think that's a flexor though, isn't it? Um, that's working on your shoulder, not your elbow. Sorry. Um. It starts with an A, and it's really small. And coneus? Yep, that's exactly what it is. Good. Wow. Okay. So, um, also on this lab activity, because it asks for the prime mover, and then it asks for the assistant movers. So the prime mover in this case, um, with your elbow, is going to be your elbow extensors, which is your tricep. Tricep would be the prime mover. Assisted movers are any other muscles that perform that same action. So like your anconius. Oh, okay. Okay, so your anconius would be the assistant mover in this case. Would that be when we did the overhead tr triceps press that we were doing mm -hmm. right there? That's exactly what we're doing. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you know if they have this filled out online or did you not um, do that? They do not have it filled out. It's all blank. Oh. But you're welcome to take that. I, I, mean, I don't want to take your company. Oh, no, it's all good because um, I really haven't even filled it in. I've uh, just done these few boxes. Um, so the primary is triceps, radius, and six feet, and conius? Yep. Are you, is this okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. Is that for all? Is that just for the elbow? Or That's that for just all? the elbow. How come it's different for all three? Because different muscle groups are involved with different joints. So your triceps. Um, Thank you, Ally. You're welcome. Um, the triceps and biceps, they cross your elbow joint and your shoulder joint. Mm -hmm. um, however, like your deltoid, um, that only acts upon the shoulder joint. So that's why you need to make sure that you can classify your muscles and which, which joints they apply to. Um, especially differentiating between the muscles of the shoulder girdle and the shoulder. That will be a key thing with this that you'll want to know. Um, and knowing which muscles act upon which joints. Shoulder and shoulder girdle. And then what was the last part? I'm sorry. Um, which muscles act on which joints? Yep. How much time have we left? Uh, we still have. I don't. I can't read clocks very well. This is ridiculous. 15, almost 25. Oh, okay, 25 minutes. Yeah, so we're good. I'm just having to write down the times for these. That's all. Mm -hmm. um. It's on case of posture. Synergist, oh, I know, if I'm thinking right, is Synergist the one where you have, that's force coupling, I'm sorry. Will that be in the test, force coupling? Force coupling, probably not. So for Synergist. Except, I know there is one question, this question, um, of whether uh, force coupling is occurring, and if so, what muscles and what movements. So upright row, is that going to be... Is that where you're just going up like this? So upright rows starts here and comes up. So that's what we were doing earlier. Oh, okay. So now force coupling, it's like, it's like, for example, you have multiple hands on a, like a submarine handle, mm -hmm. and each one's pointing at a different angle, yep. all through the same action. Oh, yep, exactly. So for that one, because that's going from here to here, that means you have to cause some, like this, right? Mm-hmm. That's going to be elbow extensors. It's going to cause elbow extension because gravity only cause elbow flexion. Okay. Or is it more going to be adduction? So are you talking about the elbow or the shoulder? Because so what you're showing me is the shoulder, but what you're saying is the elbow. Uh-oh. <laughs> so <laughs> which one are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So we're, let's start with the elbow, I guess. Okay. So the elbow is going to be 
Because it's like we're good, essentially we're, ex yeah, we're extending it. And gravity is going to cause flexion. With the elbows, because you just have you have a bar that's completely pulled out here, so you're just bringing it up to here. So with that, at your elbows, if it's the upward phase, it is performing flexion. The downward phase, you're performing extension. However, gravity is continually causing extension. Oh, because it's, it's going to lengthen out. Mm-hmm, because of the angle. weight, right? So therefore, because if you're just looking at the elbows, that's going to be extension. Resistance is tending to cause extension. Therefore, what muscle group is involved? Elbow flexors. Elbow flexors. And so if that's the case, I mean, our main elbow flexor I think of is going to be our biceps brachii. Mm -hmm. Probably our main one, but because we care about force coupling, you know, that will probably be involved. But we want to the other things that are going to contribute mm -hmm. in a more indirect way. So when it comes to force coupling, that is a rotational movement. And what type of a joint is your elbow? I think it's just a hinge, isn't it? It is a hinge, which, can you remember the diarthrodial name for that? Um, can you remember this? Mm -hmm. Good. So you'll still want to be able to know those um, for this exam, because that's one of the boxes that they'll ask you. Do you think there'll be a lot of questions on it? Just a few here and there? Um, the thing is, is that what he's going to do is he's going to perform a movement, such as um, upright rows or something. So he may just uh, be like, okay, this is what I'm doing. So starting here, coming up here. And he'll ask you, I want you to analyze the shoulder, the elbow, and the wrist. Oh so boy. that would be something that he would ask. And he may have, he may specify questions like, this is what I want you to tell me about each joint. I want you to tell me the name of the joint, how many axes it moves in, um, what movement is being performed at the shoulder, um, what muscle group is involved, or specifically what is a prime mover, um, what are the assistant movers, are there synergists involved, are there neutralizers. And so what are they? Mm -hmm. And that applies to each joint. Okay. Okay. So it's just a matter of breaking it down one by one. Gotcha. So what I do is I start with the shoulder. And I would do all of the things in the shoulder, just analyzing each individual thing.